Hey there, it's Yannick from Tutorial CU, and today in this video I want to talk about nullable types or to be more specific I want to talk about data types which are not nullable and I want to show you a way on how you can fix it or achieve it because sometimes it is necessary. Why is it necessary? Well, if you are, for example, developing a structure for your database, let's say you want to use Entity Framework and you have like a product in your database that has a price, there can be a difference between the price is set to zero or no price is set, right? So the idea is that the price could also be inside of the database kind of null. So for sure there are two differences here. This basically means, well, the price is zero and this basically means that there is no instance and no value at all, right? So for sure, this is, if you are familiar with C-sharp, absolutely clear to you, there's a difference. This one is a value and this one means no instance. There is nothing, which is basically empty. Great. So as you can tell, if I just remove that here, the price like this is not working. So integer by default, as many other primitive data types, is not nullable. The same applies for floats, decimals, bytes, and even for booleans. So I can also not set a bool and say like has expired. I cannot set that to null. But in a database, that value might be not even set. So it is not existing, right? Maybe you have a price, for example, and you don't set the value for the price. So in that scenario, you would have a name and the price field is entirely empty. There's only a void, so nothing. And then you have maybe another ID or something like that. So if the price is null, how could you handle that, right? You cannot check if the price is null because as you can tell right here, it is not working. Cannot convert null to int because it's a non-nullable value type. Well, luckily enough, we can use the generic nullable type T, just like that. Now in that scenario, we use the structure nullable here, provided the data type integer, which allows us to check now if there is any value or any instance of that variable here. So now we are able to say if price is not set at all. So if it's null, we want to do something. We want to do something specific just to show it to you again. If I set it like this, we cannot check if it's null because we're not even to set it to null, right? So as I said, maybe we want to know if a specific field from an object that we have loaded from database, for example, is or is not null. That really happens a lot of times, so you better know about nullable types. Now, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you have now learned something new. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. Oh, and look what has appeared on my screen right now. It's the C-Shop Progress Academy, the famous self-paced online course that turns you into a full-stack C-Shop developer by learning ASP.NET Angular, unit testing and C-sharp software design patterns. And we even offer a 14 day money back guarantee. So if you are not fully satisfied with the course, you can simply get your money back. No questions asked. So check it out. It's the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-sharp developer. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Now, you maybe are not familiar with that syntax here. Maybe that nullable uh, of type int and all of that. You have never seen that, but I'm absolutely sure that you have ever seen something like this. Well, and guess what? It is exactly the same. It's, to be more specific, just the shorthand syntax. So there is no difference between the nullable of type int as a generic, and exactly writing it in the shorthand syntax like this. Now, as I already said, it applies for many other data types. So we can also do exactly the same for Boolean, Right, so instead of having a bool only set to true or false, we can now also check if it is null. Let's say bool has expired again, equals to null. Well, as you can tell, it does not work, but if we make it a nullable type, you can now see, well, maybe in our database, we have no value for this Boolean. It's not true, it is not false, it's simply not existing. Maybe because our data structure has changed in the database. Maybe because why so ever we don't need it, so it's okay. And it's maybe even meant to be null, that's also fine. So that we have for that Boolean three values, null, true and false, that's okay, right? And now we can check like, okay, if has expired is equals to null, so it has never been set, there is no instance of it. Then we wanna say like, 
this object, for example, or this product, for example, has no expiration date. Because, for example, it is a book and not a banana or an apple. Awesome. Now you know what this question mark means. You have seen that nullable of type T. You know that it applies for many other data types like double, float, int, byte, boolean, for example. And you also know that you will need it if you will work with databases especially with Entity Framework Core or Adonet. And again, if you liked this video and if it helped you, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like the video and check out our C Sharp Progress Academy. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back next time.